San Francisco, California, an absolutely beautiful city exemplified by its geography, architecture, and history, San Francisco sure is a -a one-of-a-kind place. The city might be known nowadays for some less-than-ideal things, but the truth is, at its core, San Francisco is a forward-thinking, beautiful blend of cultures that come together in a stunning location. Geology has always been at the forefront of San Francisco's story, from its status as the port city of the California Gold Rush to the infamous 1906 Great San Francisco Earthquake. The area has an interesting geologic history that is expressed through its unique rock layers, many of which were formed at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and stitched onto North America over time. If learning more about the rich geologic history of the San Francisco Bay Area sounds cool to you, you're in luck. Why? Because in these next two episodes of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures, we're going to learn all about the fascinating geology of San Francisco and the Bay Area. This is episode one, Rocks and Natural Resources. Let's do it. While the Bay Area is composed of dozens of individual rock units, there are four main units that are the most indicative of the region's geological history, at least in terms of building the geological foundation of the area. Let's call this group of rocks the Bay Area Big Four. This Big Four includes the Selenian Block, the Franciscan Complex, the Great Valley Sequence, and the Coast Range Ophiolite. The Selenian block contains the oldest rocks that outcrop in the San Francisco Bay Area, 350 to 450 million year old metamorphic rocks that are found west of the San Andreas Fault on Montara Mountain, at Bodega Head, and at Point Reyes National Seashore. The metamorphic units of the Selenian block began their lithological lives as sedimentary rocks in a shallow sea, mainly as shale, sandstone, and limestone, and today consist of gneiss, schist, quartzite, and marble. While the Selenian block does contain this minor suite of metamorphic rocks, it is chiefly composed of Cretaceous-aged granite that likely formed as the southern segment of the Sierra Magmatic Arc, geographically originating roughly 300 miles southeast of where it outcrops today, in the Mojave Desert northeast of Los Angeles. The San Andreas Fault moved the Selenian block this great distance after it was deposited, a true testament to the active plate tectonics of the region. The Franciscan complex is the dominant Mesozoic aged unit in the region, composed of a metamorphosed suite of chert, gray wacky sandstone, serpentinite, shale, conglomerate, basalt, eclogite, and blue schist. Geologists simply refer to this mishmash of metasedimentary rocks as melange. The melange of the Franciscan complex is widespread throughout the Bay Area, found in the Marin Headlands, the Santa Cruz Mountains, Mount Tamalpais, Mount Diablo, Twin Peaks, Yerba Buena Island, Angel Island, Alcatraz Island, and in the Berkeley Hills. It also composes the basement rock beneath the sediments of the San Francisco Bay. The Franciscan complex is a suite of rocks known in geology as an exotic terrain, meaning this unit was formed in a different place than it currently outcrops, having moved to its location via tectonic processes. The lion's share of the rocks in this melange were deposited at the bottom of the ancient Pacific Ocean during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods from about 200 to 70 million years ago, and were added onto the edge of the North American continent. The Franciscan complex is highly folded and deformed, testament to the tectonic processes that sutured it onto the western margin of North America and uplifted it. Any road cut within this suite of rocks will show you the exact folding that I'm referring to, and I recommend driving up Mount Diablo, Twin Peaks, or the Marin Headlands north of the Golden Gate Bridge to see this in action. The Great Valley Sequence is another major rock unit in the Bay Area, composed of a thick suite of shale, sandstone, and conglomerate. When I say the Great Valley Sequence is thick, I mean it. 
It's thick with at least three C's, as it has a maximum thickness of 62,000 feet. This Mesozoic aged unit was derived from sediments that eroded off of the ancient Sierra Magmatic Arc. These sediments were compacted and lithified over millions of years, deposited during a time when the Central Valley was under the ocean. Around San Francisco, the Great Valley sequence outcrops in the East Bay Hills, Santa Cruz Mountains, Diablo Range, and Vaca Mountains. The widespread rock units that we just discussed shed light on the greater tectonic regime that was in charge of the region during the Mesozoic era, an ancient oceanic continental subduction zone involving the Farallon and North American plates. If you've seen any of my other California geology videos, you've definitely heard me discuss this subduction zone in detail, as it is a critical piece to California's geological history. To recap, oceanic continental subduction zones are convergent plate boundaries where a denser oceanic plate dives or subducts beneath a lighter continental plate. This process creates three main landforms, volcanic arcs, four arc basins, and accretionary wedges. In the San Francisco Bay Area, rocks that represent all three of these landforms are present. The Selenian block is chiefly composed of granite from the volcanic arc of this subduction zone, while the Franciscan complex represents the accretionary wedge and the Great Valley sequence, the four arc basin. This covers three of the Bay Area big four, but leaves out one critical piece to our puzzle, the Coast Range Ophiolite. So, what's up with the Coast Range Ophiolite? The Coast Range Ophiolite is admittedly an enigmatic group of rocks, with a controversial origin that is still hotly debated in the geological community. What we do know is this, the unit is between 173 and 164 million years old. It's composed of a suite of mafic and ultramafic rocks, including gabbro, peridotite, and serpentinite, and it's a piece of oceanic crust that somehow ended up on North America in California's coast ranges. The most likely and accepted origin story of our most mysterious member of the Bay Area Big Four is that it ended up here via a tectonic process known as abduction. Abduction is a rare process that can occur at oceanic continental plate boundaries where parts of the oceanic plate get thrusted onto the continent rather than thrusted underneath it, which transpires in classical subduction. The idea here is that during the beginning of the Mesozoic aged convergent plate boundary in what would become California, parts of the Farallon plate were abducted onto North America, became the Coast Range Ophiolite, and that after a brief period of abduction, the plate boundary became a classic subduction zone. The Coast Range Ophiolite is relatively uncommon around San Francisco, and in the region it only really outcrops on Mount Diablo. Speaking of Mount Diablo, Click on this video to learn all about the mountain. All of the tectonic and depositional processes that we just discussed regarding the Bay Area Big Four transpired underneath the ocean, as what would become SF was thousands of feet below the surface of the ocean during the Mesozoic era, as it was off the coast of North America. Between the deposition of the Bay Area Big Four and the birth of the San Andreas Fault in the area 7 million years ago, what would become SF was, surprise, still under the Pacific Ocean. Large suites of sedimentary units derived from the erosion of western North America were deposited in the region, including Paleogene and Neogene sandstones and shales, which outcrop in the Santa Cruz Mountains, East Bay Hills, Diablo Range, and the mountains of Marin County north of the Golden Gate. Additionally, volcanic rocks of Pliocene age can be found at Sibley Volcanic Regional Preserve in Oakland. This area boasts basalts, andesites, dikes, sills, and breccias, and is largely interpreted to be the quote-unquote innards of a volcano that erupted through the aforementioned Paleogene and Neogene sedimentary units. The Sibley Volcanic Field is a part of a larger unit of volcanic rocks in the region that are collectively known as the Moraga Volcanics, which can be found throughout the East Bay Hills. Despite its seeming monotony as just a body of water, the San Francisco Bay is actually quite the unique and interesting geologic feature. 
It's a time capsule of sorts, as it's really only existed for a short time, and will only exist for a short time. During the last ice age, sea level was too low for the bay to exist, and what would become the bay was just a valley. The Sacramento River flowed through a deep canyon in the Golden Gate and emptied into the Pacific Ocean, and as sea level rose, the bay was created. Today, it's roughly 55 miles long and 3 to 12 miles wide, with an average depth of 12 to 15 feet, which is actually really shallow. Over 80% of the bay is less than 12 feet deep, and the water in the San Francisco Bay is considered brackish, as it is 15% less dissolved salt than seawater. As the Sacramento River empties into the bay, it brings huge amounts of sediment with it, eroded from the Sierra Nevada and other localities upstream of the bay. Eventually, this river will deposit enough sediments to fully fill the San Francisco Bay up with sediment, making it a coastal plain again. As such, the San Francisco Bay is a time capsule of sorts. The hills and mountains around San Francisco have long yielded mercury and coal, two commodities that were used extensively throughout the California gold rush. Mercury was used to isolate gold from its host rock, and coal was used in industrial applications associated with mining and other industries. Two places that were huge producers of mercury around the Bay Area are Mount Diablo in the East Bay and the new Almaden Mining District near San Jose. Mercury was mined from the minerals cinnabar and metacinnabar, and roughly 84 million pounds of mercury was extracted from the new Almaden Mining District between 1847 and 1976 when the mines were in operation. Interestingly enough, New Almaden was opened the year before gold was discovered at Sutter's Mill. A happy coincidence, I suppose. Coal was largely extracted from the Mount Diablo area, particularly in the Black Diamond Mining District. Roughly 4 million tons of coal was extracted from here between 1860 and 1914. Now that we've learned all about the rocks and natural resources of the Bay Area, let's discuss the elephants in the proverbial room. The Big Bad San Andreas Fault, its minions such as the Hayward Fault, and past and future earthquakes in the San Francisco Bay Area. We'll talk all about this in the next episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. Be sure to stay tuned for episode two of Geology of San Francisco and the Bay Area, where we'll discuss all about these earthquakes and fault lines that pose such a risk to residents in the region. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and as always, peace. See you next time. All right, everybody. I figured I would try something new and creative. Uh, this is Rock Units as NBA players. If you're interested in hearing my insight on what NBA players from the Golden State Warriors, the Bay Area Big Four Rock Units are, stay tuned. So we just learned all about the Bay Area Big Four, which are the four main rock units that comprise the Bay Area. That would be the Selenian Block, the Franciscan Complex, the Great Valley Sequence, and the Coast Range Ophiolite. And I figured it would be kind of fun to compare the uh, players on the Golden State Warriors to what rock units they are. So uh, let's get it started. Starting off with the Selenian Block, Kevin Durant is the Selenian Block because the Selenian block came from somewhere else, and while it's currently in the Bay Area now, it'll only be here briefly since it's getting moved by the San Andreas Fault, and that is just like KD. KD came to Golden State from OKC, won a few rings, and moved on. So Kevin Durant is the Selenian block. All right, now to move on to the Franciscan Complex. I think that Steph Curry is the Franciscan Complex. Steph and the Franciscan Complex have a lot in common, all right? So the Franciscan Complex is the most widespread, ubiquitous, and reliable rock layer in the area. You know, you can find the Franciscan Complex in a lot of places around the Bay Area. And uh, Steph is reliable to Golden State. He's ubiquitous. Everyone knows about him. Everyone loves him. Even Golden State Warriors haters, which I was a Warriors hater back during their run because I, you know, I spent the first eight years of my life in Ohio, so I'm kind of partial to the Cavs and LeBron. But you got to admire Steph. He's ubiquitous. Everyone loves him, just like the Franciscan Complex. 
Okay, now we're going to move on to the Great Valley sequence. And I'm going to be real with you guys. Clay Thompson is 100% the Great Valley sequence. Why? Well, the Great Valley sequence is the most chill rock layer in the Bay Area. Think about it. It was deposited by the erosion of mountains. And, you know, as it erodes and just deposits, it's really going with the flow, becoming a rock unit, just like Clay Thompson. Clay is a cool, calm, collected guy. He's a chill dude. He's a go with the flow type of character. And Clay Thompson really embodies the persona of the Great Valley sequence. Now, we're going to move on to our last player, Draymond Green. So, Draymond Green is 100% the Coast Range Ophelite. Um, the Coast Range Ophelite and Draymond both have been through some stuff. You know, the Coast Range Ophelite started in the bottom of the ocean as oceanic crust and was abducted onto North America. Draymond Green's been through some stuff too. The Coast Range Ophelite's a little rough around the edges and isn't afraid to do the dirty work, get down and dirty when push comes to shove, just like Draymond Green. Some people might call him a dirty player, some people might have a lot of things to say about Draymond, but the fact of the matter is, you gotta respect his game and you gotta respect him as a person, because when push comes to shove, he's there, just like the Coast Range Ophelite. All right, so <laughs> that was Rock Units as NBA players. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always guys, thanks again and peace!